Today we're going to learn about stregolactones, a group of plant hormones that performs many functions. This group of hormones was discovered by scientists relatively recently, so we have a limited amount of knowledge on all of the processes controlled by or requiring stregolactones. In this video, we will briefly cover a few of the major roles that stregolactones play in plants. Be sure to pay attention, because there will be a review question at the end of this video. Stregolactones are plant hormones that have two main functions, which we will discuss in detail later in the video. The first function is to control plant development. The second function is to mediate symbiotic relationships between plants and soil microbes. Some parasitic plants also use strigolactones to stimulate seed germination when it is near a host plant. This third parasitic function is what led to the discovery of strigolactones. To explain the mechanism of strigolactones, let's focus on each function individually, beginning with the control of plant development. Plants grow and develop at the ends of the root or the shoot. Plants can control growth by regulating which cells are active as well as responding to the environmental conditions such as temperature and water availability. Stregolactones contribute to plant growth by working with a more commonly known plant growth hormone, auxin. Auxin is made in the plant and functions in high concentrations to promote cell elongation and plant growth. Auxin accumulates in the cells on the shaded side of the stem as well as in the lower side of roots. The accumulation of auxin results in cell growth and elongation in areas of high auxin concentration. A process called auxin transport canalization mediates the movement of auxin throughout the plant via transport channels called pins. Pins are the gateway in the cell membrane where auxin flows into a cell, allowing for plant growth and development. This diagram shows the transport of auxin into a cell via pin proteins, thus allowing for plant development. It is thought that auxin regulates the synthesis of secondary messenger hormones, including strigolactones. Strigolactones increase the rate of removal of the auxin transport protein, PIN1, from the plasma membrane, therefore halting auxin transport. The removal of auxin transport channels inhibits the growth of plants. This diagram shows the function of strigolactone in plant development. When strigolactones are present, transport proteins are removed, preventing the flow of auxin into the cell. This prevents plant growth and development. So as a review, auxin, which promotes cell elongation and plant growth, mediates its own transportation by regulating the synthesis of strigolactones, which decrease the flow of auxin by depleting its transport channels. When strigolactone is absent, auxin is able to travel through cell membranes via pins, which allow for plant development. When strigolactones are present, the pin proteins are removed and auxin transport is inhibited. This results in the inhibition of plant growth. In stressful environments, auxin will trigger the synthesis of strigolactones to inhibit plant growth. Although strigolactones play a crucial role in plant development, it is another hormone, auxin, that starts the initial chain of reactions to mediate plant development. Strigolactones also help plants develop symbiotic relationships with microbes that live in the soil. Symbiotic relationships occur in nature when two organisms live and work together. For example, Nemo lives in a sea anemone because clownfish and anemones have a symbiotic relationship. The clownfish gives the anemone food and the anemone protects the clownfish from predators. Plants and microbes like to form symbiotic relationships too, so that they can share their resources. In this case, the fungus gives the plant vital minerals and water that are used in processes like photosynthesis, while the plant gives the fungus sugar that can be broken down into energy. Experiments have shown that strigolactones from plants cause increased growth in the hyphae of symbiotic fungi. Hyphae are root-like projections formed by a fungus that help it absorb nutrients. These hyphae significantly increase the amount of nutrients that the plant can reach. Scientists have observed this process under microscopes. This is an image of a plant root with a symbiotic fungus. The fungus forms a structure, called an arbuscule, shown by the blue arrows inside the plant's root cells. 
These structures are what allow the fungus and the plant to exchange nutrients. Scientists don't know the specifics of how strigolactones help promote symbiotic relationships yet, but they think that strigolactones produced by a plant's roots help attract the fungi. Maybe you'll be the person who discovers how this process works. Lastly, strigolactones act as germination stimulants for root parasitic plants. We briefly mentioned before that strigolactones were actually first discovered in the roots due to their ability to stimulate germination in the seeds of a parasitic plant known as the striga, or witch weed. Root parasitic plants are plants which parasitize other plants and cause damage at the roots of the host. Just like how fleas are parasites to mammals such as cats and dogs, there are some plants that rely on other plants for food. In order for these parasitic plants to grow and develop, they must find a host plant. Seed germination is stimulated by strigolactones when the parasitic seed is in close proximity to the roots of a plant host. The seeds of a parasitic plant can remain dormant in the soil for up to 15 years. These seeds do not germinate unless they recognize chemical signals, called germination stimulants, released by the host plant. The parasitic seedlings then attach to the roots of the host and establish a connection with the host. This allows the parasites to take up nutrients and water from the host. After several weeks or months, the parasitic plant emerges from the ground it then matures and produces a large number of seeds, which can remain in the soil for many years until it is stimulated to germinate by strigolactones from a nearby host plant. This restarts the cycle of the parasitic plant. Since strigolactones have only been recently discovered, there is still a lot left to be explored. Strigolactones play a role in allowing plants to cope with non-ideal conditions such as drought, salt stress, and nutrient deficiencies. Experiments have shown that strigolactone production increases when plants have low levels of nitrogen or phosphorus. Scientists are still working to understand exactly why that is, but they suspect that strigolactones change the way plants grow and develop so they are better suited to deal with these nutrient deficiencies. These functions can be further explored to help develop crop varieties that can produce high yields in many different environments or to create treatments that can be applied to existing crop varieties. We can also try to breed plants that are more efficient at forming symbiotic relationships with soil microbes to promote plant growth. We explained earlier in the video why these relationships are important to plant development and how strigolactones are involved in establishing these relationships. By breeding plants that produce higher levels of strigolactone, we can possibly create plants that are better at attracting microbes to their roots. Research could also be done on how to minimize the negative effect that parasitic plants, such as witch weeds, have on their hosts. This is especially problematic in subsistence farms in Africa, where these parasitic plants are very commonly found. Overall, strigolactin research has great potential to help solve issues in agriculture and horticulture. Maybe you will be the one contributing to these areas of research in the future. Hopefully you are paying attention during this video because here is the review question. What are the three main functions of strigolactones? The answer is plant development, symbiotic relationships with soil microbes, and seed germination of parasitic plants.